Hey there, I'm making a 3D platformer on Roblox called PBNJ. In this devlog, I'll go over the mascot redesign along with various changes made to the game. I first found inspiration for what I wanted to achieve. For example, I love Spyro's look in the remastered trilogy. The slight color change for the scales is something I wanted to emulate. I then sketched out my thoughts onto paper. Following the sketch, I hopped into Blender. Here's the result. I hadn't used Blender in a while and I was worried about adding spots, but I found that to be quite easy. To do this, I went into edit mode and used the knife tool to make various shapes. For texturing, I made a color palette using paint.net and added it to the model. I ran into some issues when it came to importing the character model into Roblox Studio. There's a bug where if the scale property of a model is not one, then it messes up how characters move. The fix was to simply put the contents of the model into a new model. Since this is the new character model, the rig I made isn't the exact same. This means that the swimming animation is slightly off. I might remake some animations in the future not sure. If you glide into water, you are now forced out of gliding and put into swimming. You can also now swim down faster. This is done by pressing control on a keyboard, X on an Xbox controller, or the dedicated button on mobile devices. I'm thinking of letting the player sprint underwater. It would probably have the same effects as normal sprinting. Learning from the videos I watched on water level design, I found that I wanted to keep movement mechanics open to the player when underwater, not hinder them. I don't think digging underwater is a good idea though. Editor here, most of the scripts for these voice lines in this devlog was written quite a while ago, but I fixed a long-standing issue with swimming where the player would jolt up when trying to swim up after landing on something. I couldn't figure out what the issue was for weeks and mostly gave up on fixing the issue, but it turns out the issue was how Roblox handles jumping. Setting the player's jump height to zero toggles the mobile jump button, so my solution is to set the jump height to a really small number. I made a custom skybox for the hub world. I'd like to make a skybox for each world, but that would take some time. I've added an are you sure screen for when the player tries to go to the main menu from the pause menu. I've also added a button in the pause menu that lets you go back to the hub world if you are not in it. When gliding, the character now has some wind effects. This is done using a beam, which took a while to get working. Coins now go mostly transparent after being collected. This is to guide players even after they collect the coins. Previously, some coins would respawn, but I didn't think that was a good solution. An active camera option has been added to the options menu. Roblox has many camera types, but the only relevant ones here are track and follow. The default camera type of the game is now follow, meaning that the camera will rotate to keep the player in the center of the camera. You could set the camera to passive, aka track, at any time if you wish. I've also added an auto jump option. This uses Roblox's auto jump feature, which I believe only works for touch enabled, aka mobile devices. The game is linked in the description if you'd like to play it for yourself. Like the video and subscribe for more. Just an additional segment to share some stuff about the game and the channel. I have a data system working in the game now with different save files. It took ages to work on and it's still not done. I've also began work on the Grasslands world and a puzzle system. I think I'd like to make an entire devlog on those things though. Also, I'd like to make a video on supporting mobile devices with Roblox followed by a video about Xbox and supporting controller in general. Anyhow, thanks again for watching.